So back on December 2nd, 2023, I got called out to this grocery store for the... They just, they just said that the ice cream taste was down. But it turns out that all the frozen food was down. Everything is soft. So this is rack D and rack E. I like to look at my suction pressure and the set point. That's something that I kind of look at first. If I got a suction pressure that's way too high, then I know that I've got compressors that aren't running, probably. And this is the evaporators. So I want to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what we got here. Lots of these circuits don't have sensors that are being monitored by this Danfoss controller. Everywhere that it says either 50 or 320, that's an unmonitored circuit. But all of these ones have thermistors and they are connected to this controller and we can check them. So let's look at the first one. D1 shows 42 degrees right now. We scroll over to the history. Right now it's showing us 10 minute intervals. And you can see that it goes back good little ways and it's really hot in there whatever circuit that is I don't know if that's the reach-ins or the walk-ins and it's not till three and a half days ago that it was down at good temperature by the looks of this here it looks like something happened right around 7 30 a.m. I'm gonna scroll a little bit and we're going to look at the temperatures and the times. And after 7.30 a.m. on the 29th, we lost our negative 17 degrees and the temperature just started trending upward and it never stopped. Let's go look at another one. Scroll down to D6. That's a walk-in. Holding 15.7 right now. And, you know, I really like these Dan Fosses. You can change the settings. I'm going to change it from... 10 minute intervals of temperature measurements to three hours. This will help me see several days in one screen. So D6 already has other problems. This is the same walk-in that I had to change out a dryer on, on this one video right here. So this is not gonna help me on this diagnosis. So we're gonna find another circuit. It's gonna be D9 sitting at 45 degrees right now. D9 is a good example that matches on 1129 around 7.30 a.m. is when our temperature started to rise and never recovered. Now in this screen, which is the rack overview screen, I see something that's pretty alarming and that's the discharge pressure for 407A. It's very high and it's dropping slowly so now when I go back to look at my suction groups I can see that my suction pressure is not near the target so I've got a problem there go check the rack overview and I'll see very evident now that my condenser is not running my fans are not running I got a problem with my condenser Might as well have a look at the recent history on it. What do we find? Oh, big numbers. Wow. Looks to me like this discharge pressure went off the charts on 11.29, around 7.30 a.m. also. Let's get a little bit of a more focused look by narrowing down the time frames. So at 7.30, our discharge pressure started going up, and that's all she wrote. And with pressures that high, that liquid line ought to be hot, wouldn't it? So on the roof, I found nothing running. So I start by checking my power. I like to go phase to phase and then each phase to ground. 
and I find no power coming into it. So we've got a disconnect up there. I want to make sure that the disconnect doesn't have any fuses in it, and this one doesn't. So the next thing I got to do is search the store and find the breaker box, and find out what's going on. And so then after walking around, I found it in the back corner. And this is the breaker box room, the breaker room, electrical room. I find the panels and I come up on it. Actually, it's the second panel I walk up to. I have these breakers right here on the bottom right, shut off. That's right, they are shut off. Somebody turned them off. And D is not the only one. C is also shut off. So I turn D back on, go back on the roof, and that fixes my problem. Voila, it's on. Such a preventable and avoidable call. I don't know who turned off those breakers, but the manager didn't know about it. Nobody knew who turned them off. Now, they didn't even call in Raxi. But Rexy's way over there. It's also for low temperature frozen food. I think Rexy's actually the one for those frozen doors that I walked up on at the beginning of the video. <laughs> this one's hot too. So this here is my Rexy protocol. It's on the other side of the store, next to Rack B. We got this Dan Foss controller in here. We're gonna go in there and look at the discharge rack overview. And that one's way up there. So you can see my suction pressure, set 0.6 up at 21, so you know that thing's not running. Those compressors are off. All that food is hot. Let's find out when that happened and see if the, they shut the breakers off at the same time. Let me change my view in here real quick from 10 minutes to 3 hours. I can see multiple days. Go back up to the 29th, and sure enough, on the 29th in the morning it was working. But in the afternoon or in late morning, it was not. Let's zoom in a little bit more on that. Find out around 7.30 for the 29th. And, ooh, there it is. 7.30, we started having trouble. Some idiot shut both of those breakers off and forgot to turn them back on. Caused all this food to melt for three, four days. All these customers buying all this food and a preventable service call. So there wasn't really too much to learn on this one, except, well, you never know what you're gonna get into. You can't fix stupid. Somebody should have gotten in a significant amount of trouble for, for shutting those breakers off and not turning them back on. If it would have been me, I would have, I would have been in a lot of trouble. I know that for sure. So anyways, Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see y'all on the next one.